History can be daunting. That's why sometimes when we want to learn a thing or two about it, we simply turn to the colorful world of film and TV. Of course, in that case, we have to embrace somebody else's creative vision of that time period, but it comes with the fair trade-off. We get some entertainment value back. The Renaissance, for example, the period of creative genius and a great cultural change. There is a plenty of fun content for us to enjoy. One of my favorites is a TV show called Da Vinci Demons. So let's see if I can elaborate why I think this could be potentially worth your time. Speaking of time, the show does not waste it, trust me, it actually respects it. Just get through the maybe slightly bizarre opening and you'll be sucked right in with our main hero, who is quite a charmer, but we'll talk about him a bit later. I want to give an honorable mention to the main music theme. It's absolutely riveting. And it's used not just in the main credits, but also in some climatic scenes, just to maybe give them that little tasteful oomph. Not too little, not too much, just like a cherry on top of the cheesecake, you know what I mean? What if I tell you that when nudity and gore pop up on the screen, they sweep every award in the severe category? No jokes. I mean, the show did premiere in 2013, which is two years after the Game of Thrones debut, so who knows? Maybe it got some inspiration from there, but it doesn't matter. It's there, it's in your face, it's for us to enjoy. And the most important part is, it serves the story quite well. Now let's talk about our boy Vinci, or Artista, how some call him in the show. What a character, love him. Brilliantly portrayed by the English actor Tom Riley, he is eccentric, taxi, charismatic, always, 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 always thirsty for knowledge, stupidly stubborn sometimes, <laughs> weird, like awesome weird, but what I really like about him is that he doesn't come off as self-absorbed or self-centered, or egoistic for that matter which can be an easy trap for anyone of such a popularity and such a genius mind, right? Fun fact, Da Vinci was a vegetarian. He respected and loved animals, and he was known to purchasing caged birds just to set them free. Respect. The historical notion that a lot of his early work was commissioned by Lorenzo de' Medici lies at the basis of the show and it plays wonderfully because the development of the alliance of their relationship is really fun to watch, especially because our genius Da Vinci has to actually sweat for it. Yeah, baby. Okay, so Florence, being a perfect playground for anybody who likes to live a bit outside of the box, who is brave enough to innovate, to do something different, eventually catches the eye of Rome. And we, my friends, we get our sets of villains. Why? Because do not mess with the doctrines of the church, or you'll get spanked. That's basically the motto. And trust me, they're not the ones to mess with. In this particular case, the good villain does contribute to a good show. So Rome is a bully and Florence is a creative kid. And the poor Da Vinci is just stuck smack right in the middle of it. Basically forced to innovate to save his butt. And all he wants to do is to draw and maybe to fly and maybe study some stinky human corpse once in a while. Because he's Da Vinci. Fun fact, only 6,000 of the estimated 13K of Da Vinci's writings remain to date. The missing 7,000 pages are forming the basis for this particular show covering the life of the artist's mid-twenties. That being said, you probably can guess that the show is not perfect or historically accurate to the dot. I personally am okay with it. I do have one bone to pick with it though. My personal complaint is that out of the three major needs that drive our main character Ford, I feel the need which is plenty, but still, one of them does not get fully resolved, I think, at least to my satisfaction, but honestly, I'm gonna leave it up to you to be the judge. And overall, if you're not one of those people who will point out like, oh, look, there's a red candle in the shot, and they clearly did not make them like that during the Ren songs. I don't know why I did that voice, but it doesn't matter. If you're not one of those people, I'm pretty sure you will enjoy all three seasons of this show. And perfection? My friends, overrated. So there you go. My take on Da Vinci Demons. Thank you so much for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one.